you're celebrating your birthday with your family, but your favorite TV show characters are hunting you down for sports and there's no way to escape. When your childhood dreams are turned into a horrifying death trap, what do you do? You'll be shocked at how far these FNAF inspired creatures are willing to go by the end of the movie to feed their bloodlust. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat every evil animatronic in the Banana Splits movie. This birthday party is going to turn into a funeral. The family has gathered to celebrate Harley's seventh birthday, and the kid is a little disappointed with his gifts. But when his stepfather reveals that they bought tickets to watch the boy's favorite TV show as a live audience, he can't believe his luck. This kid is a diehard fan of the Banana Splits, but these friendly animatronics are going to turn into murdering psychopaths, and they'll be putting on a show so horrifying at the end, it'll give this boy nightmares for the rest of his life. They go to the studio lot where the live show is being taped, and a whole crowd of fans are waiting at the entrance. Nobody is allowed to record anything inside, and the staff collects everyone's phones, but that's when the banana splits arrive. Harley here is so excited that he stands in front of their car to wave hello, but they stop inches away from running him over. They don't even seem to care that they nearly killed this kid, and his mother pulls him out of the road before they drive away. Okay, I can already see where this is going. This boy is so obsessed with his TV idols that he can't even recognize danger when it's staring him in the face. And this is going to become a serious problem later on. We can all remember as little kids when we had our favorite TV show, whether it was Spongebob, Adventure Time, or even Teletubbies. But imagine if those Teletubbies nearly ran you over and drove off without even so much as an apology. This would be gut-wrenching, and even at 7 years old, it should be enough to make you stop being their fans forever. Instead, this kid defended them, saying that they would never hurt him, and this kind of thinking is exactly how you end up at Neverland Ranch. When these animatronics are going to go full Terminator on them, that kind of blind trust is a serious problem. Now, we can't put all the blame on the kid here, because his parents shouldn't have even bought these tickets in the first place. TV shows like this normally target the age group of 1 to 4 years old, and this kid is 7. He should be watching Captain America and playing Minecraft because he's way too old for this stuff. When Harley here realizes what's underneath these warm and fuzzy exteriors and finally gets to see the show for what it really is, he's going to be scarred for life. And if the parents hadn't reinforced this poor kid's stunted development, he would be watching age-appropriate violence on a 4K TV instead of seeing dead bodies with lollipops shoved down their throats live and in theater. The banana splits enter the studio and they all line up in front of the mechanic, who wants to make some adjustments before the show begins. One of them enters the booth where he plugs it in for a tune-up, but the mechanic doesn't realize there's a glitch in the software. Backstage, the head of the network is in his office and tells the producers over the phone that he plans to cancel the Banana Splits program after tonight, but doesn't realize that someone else is listening in. That's when he hears a strange noise from across the room, and he gets out to check it out. Looking behind the curtains, he's surprised to see one of the animatronics standing there smiling, but it's just a distraction. The man is kidnapped by another robot with no one coming to his rescue, and the next time we see him, he's going to experience the most brutal death you could possibly imagine. Okay, let's get one thing out of the way here. These things look nothing like animatronics, and it's pretty ridiculous if you take it at face value. But imagine meeting one of these things face to face, and it's a different story. These robots don't need to look convincing to be able to murder you and your entire family, and it puts a horrifying turn on this whole scenario. For decades, some of the brightest minds in the world, like Stephen Hawking and Elon Musk, have been telling the public that artificial intelligence is mankind's greatest threat. They just didn't imagine that this threat would be born in a failing entertainment center, and that honestly makes it a hundred times scarier. Computers have already been able to outsmart humanity's greatest strategists in both chess and Go, which has infinite possibilities. They're also able to learn from their surroundings, and all of this can even be generated by a computer-based neural network that mimics how a human brain works with surprising accuracy. Even on a physical level, Boston Dynamics have been able to develop robots that can run, walk like a human, and travel difficult terrain. It's only a matter of time that these are combined into a highly logical conscious mind that can fight back and think for itself. And when you put all that deadly potential into these four creatures here, we should be pissing our pants. Which is exactly why they need to protect themselves from AI with a wallet built with RFID blocking technology. Is your wallet bulky, heavy, and uncomfortable? Unlike big and bulky wallets, the Ridge wallet is the perfect size that can hold up to 12 cards plus room for cash. Every Ridge wallet is made with RFID blocking technology that protects you against digital theft and it makes a great Father's Day gift that will spare your dad from an AI robot overlord. These wallets are actually so durable, they come with a lifetime warranty. 
This one I personally love is made out of carbon fiber, which is very lightweight, but five times stronger than steel, guaranteed to survive an apocalypse. In fact, the wallets have over 40,000 five-star reviews, and the Ridge team is so confident you'll like their wallet, they'll let you test drive it for 45 days, and you can send it back for a full refund if you don't absolutely love it. Just imagine these gore-seeking animatronics getting access to all that you hold dear. Better get a few wallets for you and your family just in case. Use my link in the description, ridge.com slash howtobeat, and my coupon code howtobeat to get 10% off your Ridge wallet purchase. Thank you to the Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. The show begins, and all the kids are excited to see their favorite characters as they walk onto the stage. There's Flegel the dog, Snorky the elephant, Bingo the ape, Drooper the lion, and Stevie here. Everyone is enjoying the show, and the group plays their theme song to close the set. But that's when Drooper violently knocks the man's leg out from under him. They all laugh but Harley here realizes something is very wrong with the animatronics. His mom thinks it's just a part of the show, but he's the only one in the audience that can tell these robots are not behaving normally, and they're all going to realize that this will turn into a bloodbath, starting with Stevie here. Backstage after the show, Stevie is completely wasted, and is pissed off at Drooper for knocking him down on stage. Taunting the robots, he tells them that he hates performing with them every single night before he walks into his changing room and closes the door. But Drooper here decides to take it personally. Later, the man finds the robot inside his room and tells it to leave, but it won't move. He spits a mouthful of alcohol in its face, but the robot snatches a giant lollipop off a shelf, grabs the man, and shoves the whole thing straight down his throat. Blood starts gushing out of his mouth, and he becomes the first person to be brutally murdered by the banana splits. Okay, Stevie here never had a chance, and his first mistake was being a blackout drunk. Through the course of this man's evening, he's had 9 drinks of whiskey, and he was already half naked in a bathrobe when we started counting his drinks. Now I don't know where that is on a drunk scale, but if the man wasn't hammered, there's one thing he could have done that might have given him a chance. Even if this machine is stronger than you and can't feel pain, it still needs to see and hear in order to interact with its environment, and that's exactly why I would go straight for the eyes to defeat it. When you're in a situation like this, you need to react quickly and use what you have around you. And right now, the closest thing around us are racks of clothes. So the best thing to do here is grab these clothes and throw them over the animatronic's eyes to block its vision for as long as possible. A robot would most likely want to deal with its impaired vision as a priority because it leaves it vulnerable to attack. That means it will stop trying to kill you for just long enough to take the clothes off its head and it's both the quickest and most effective way to create a distraction and get yourself in a better position to escape. Now, if we were brave enough, you could take this one step further and use this opportunity to kill it. Given how much alcohol this man drinks, I try to grab a bottle of whiskey and break it over the robot's head. The liquid might be able to short circuit his electronics and that could either fry its computer or slow it down. Then to destroy the body, there's one more thing here we could take advantage of. It might be a machine on the inside, but it's pure cotton and plastic on the outside. So if we found a lighter, we could set it on fire and it should be enough to burn away all his circuits and kill it. Some of the audience members are led on a tour backstage, where they finally get to meet the banana splits. The fans jump in and start taking pictures with the animatronics, but this father here has a secret ulterior motive and sneaks away to find the producer of the show. The tour guide spots him leaving and chases after him, but as they leave, Snorky here realizes he's not being watched. This animatronic has already killed dozens of people and has thrown their bodies down in the basement. Outside the studio, the stepfather has managed to get his phone back, but when his wife finds him, he quickly hangs up. He tells her he's been sorting things out with the office, but she doesn't believe him, and takes his phone out of his hand, finding out he's been having an affair with his assistant. Austin comes out to confront the man, but the stepfather is fed up with both of them and says he'll wait by the car. Now Snorky here has the man alone, and the stepfather doesn't realize that he's about to be hunted for sport. Later in the parking lot, the stead that hears something in the distance and the man realizes that the animatronic is driving straight at him. He starts running for his life but drops his phone and Snorky runs it over with his car. The stepfather finds a security guard standing in the guardhouse and reaches out to the man for help but is shocked to find the guy's head fall off and into his hands. Horrified at what he's holding, the man backs away and Snorky runs him down with his car. Okay, this man definitely could have avoided this if he was paying attention, but I think it's fair to say he had it coming to him. Now what's interesting here is that Snorky went completely out of his way to run this man down, and if we can figure out why, we can predict the robot's behavior and survive longer than everyone else. When he was inside the studio, all the guests wandered off, and Snorky here was alone with these two 7-year-old kids completely unsupervised, but instead of killing easy prey, he targeted this douchebag stepfather. 
This tells us these robots have rules for who they decide to kill, and that means we can predict who they will kill next. First, the robots captured the head of the network who was going to cancel their show. Then they killed Stevie, who was a drunk asshole and didn't respect anyone. By looking at the pattern that's developing, we'd find that all of the people that are either missing or dead are rude and disrespectful men. We don't know anything about the security guard, but earlier when he stopped them and the boy was excited to meet the banana splits, this was his expression. So he probably fits the profile too. With all this in mind, this guy will be hunted if he tries to go back and save his family. And since he's already cheated on his wife, he might as well leave them behind because he had a great chance to escape here. If I were him, I would have checked the dead security guard's pockets because not only would we find the keys to every single exit, but also a phone. We can even use facial recognition to unlock it since we still have his severed head and call an Uber to take us home. It's definitely lowlife behavior, but at this point, dealing with the cops might be easier than dealing with the wife. So for a man who's already willing to throw away his family, it's the most logical decision to make. Meanwhile, Dad and his girlfriend start live streaming using his girlfriend's phone and decides now is the perfect moment to propose to her. She's overwhelmed with excitement at being engaged, but that's when one of the animatronics walks up and interrupts them. Seeing the man has a phone, Flegel here takes it away and puts it inside the bag for a magic trick. He starts beating it with a wand and breaks the phone into pieces, destroying their last chance to call for help. Grabbing Thad, he shoves him into this magician's box and locks him inside with no way to escape. Inserting the blade into the slit, Flegel the dog forces the girl to cut her new fiancé in half and doesn't let her go until the saw is all the way through his body. It's sickening, and when Flegel here pulls the box apart, the man's guts spill out on the floor. The robot then grabs the girl by the throat, but she fights back and rips off his furry hand to reveal a metal arm inside. He's about to finish her off, but when he hears the kids' voices in the distance, he walks off to find them. These robots want to do something so horrible to these kids by the end that you'll honestly be surprised the movie would take such a dark turn. Okay, I know we should feel bad for this girl here because she just lost her boyfriend, but let's remember that this guy proposed to her in the studio of a creepy children's show full of robots. That's not the kind of guy you want to spend the rest of your life with, so maybe she should be looking at the glass half full here. Now, even if she's just sidestepped a bad marriage, this is still absolutely terrifying. But this death was so brutal, it's easy to miss one key detail here. This is a magician's box, but these things are always designed to fit two people inside to create the illusion of sawing someone in half. What's incredibly disturbing is that this one is designed for a single person. Logically, there's no reason to have this unless you were actually using this box to kill people for real, which means that this isn't a one-time thing. Since the animatronics didn't build a set, then somebody from the studio is helping these robots murder people, and we can't trust a single person who works for this show. Now, Flegel was about to kill this girl, but stopped as soon as he heard the kid's voice. This tells us that hunting children is a higher priority for these animatronics than killing a woman, and it's starting to show us a hierarchy here for who they are more likely to target, with men all the way at the top and children coming second. If I'm a kid in this situation, there's only one thing we can do here, and that's to throw every adult under the bus. I need to make sure I'm staying with one of the dads because based on the pattern so far, these animatronics are going to kill the men first before they chase after us kids, and that's going to give us time to escape. We need to protect ourselves by grouping with those who are higher on the kill order, and it's cold-blooded, but it's the best chance at survival. Flegel finds the kids and asks Harley here if it knows where Snorky the Elephant is. The robot nods its head, agreeing to take them to meet the other animatronic, but seeing its robotic hand, Harley here doesn't trust it. His friend Zoe convinces him to go together to meet his favorite character, and the kids leave the room, with no idea that this thing just murdered someone only moments ago. Meanwhile, this father here is lurking around in the studio offices. He thinks his daughter can become a child star and wants to introduce her to one of the show's producers. He finds the network head's office and walks in to meet him, but instead, he finds Drooper the Lion inside. The animatronic burns his face using an aerosol can flamethrower and his daughter runs away screaming, but she gets cornered by Bingo here and shoved into a sack. These robots are killing the adults and abducting the children to add her to their private collection they're keeping downstairs. And there are two more kids that they still have left to collect before they can get what they want. Okay, this pattern is becoming a lot more clear, because now we might actually know what it wants. Up to this point, it was only killing people and finding the most horrifying ways to do it. Even Drooper here is having a great time watching the man's face melt off. This time, however, it's finally got its hands on a kid, and instead of killing her, it looks like it's killing all the adults in order to abduct the kids. Now, if this is really what these animatronics want, then these parents have a tough decision to make here, because we could use these kids as bait to lure the robots in and ambush them. 
We just saw earlier that even the sound of a kid's voice will stop it dead in its tracks to search for the child. And if we aren't using that in our strategy, then it's a missed opportunity. This father had a great chance to kill two birds with one stone here, because if he wanted to impress the producers with his daughter's raw acting talent, using her as live bait to catch and kill the robots could be the audition of a lifetime. She would be terrified, and that display of genuine emotion might impress them enough to land her a role in their next TV show. But if the plan fails and she's captured by robots, then maybe she wasn't talented enough to begin with and he should just make another one. Austin and his mother return inside to the soundstage only to find that everyone is missing, including her son. That's when the tour guide walks in with the producer, and they reassure her that they're all probably exploring the other sets. Suddenly, a man walks through the door, and they see it's the father who was torched by Drooper the Lion. The others check on him and find out he was attacked by one of the animatronics. The producer tells the tour guide to call the cops immediately, and the girl runs off to get help. But the mother realizes that the kids are in grave danger, and they go looking for the children on their own. Meanwhile, the kids are taken to the workshop where the animatronics are repaired, and Hardy here asks if they can meet Snorky now. The robot points to the other end of the room, and they find a little girl locked away in a cage as Flegel pushes them inside and locks the door shut. Okay, up until now, every single person in the building has been completely free to leave whenever they wanted. The doors weren't locked, and nobody was trapped inside. The problem is that nobody ever knew these robots were killing adults and capturing kids until it was too late. Even without phones, this whole problem could have been very easily solved by simply driving out to contact the police. Even pulling the fire alarm will bring more people into this equation to help the search, and the more people there are, the less likely you will get cornered by an evil animatronic and kill. Now with that said, these robots are clearly programmed by a set of rules, and it must be against their protocols to hurt children or else they would have done so already. So the best strategy here is to befriend these robots. If we can't beat them, then we should join them. Flegel here has already demonstrated that he can understand and communicate with us, so I would offer them help to round up and kill all the adults. As kids, we actually have a great bargaining chip here, because right now the animatronics need to chase and catch the grown-ups to kill them. But if they use children to lure the parents in, that makes it much easier to hunt them down, so it's very logical for the robots to accept their help. This gives us the perfect opportunity to sabotage them and figure out how to turn these machines off. All robots need a power source to work and have an off switch that can be easily accessed by the mechanic or technician. While we're out hunting the grown-ups, we might have enough time to find the switch and shut them down before they figure out what we're up to. Beth here searches for her son Harley, but as she walks into a stage, she hears a beating drum when suddenly Bingo the animatronic pulls Austin here up into the air. She turns around and panics when she realizes her son has disappeared. Looking up, the woman finds him being held hostage and her motherly instincts kick in. Angry, she runs up to the rafters and sneaks up behind Bingo here, tossing him over the ledge as he falls to his death. With her son now safe, the mother goes downstairs to find this girl kneeling by her dead boyfriend and she's still traumatized by his death. She asks her where her son Harley is and finds out he was taken by Flegel. Okay, we finally managed to take out one of these animatronics, and there's three more to go. But Bingo here made a huge mistake by revealing an excellent strategy to defeat him and all his robot friends as well. On the ground, they're stronger than us, know the studio's layout better than us, and can sneak up when we least expect them to. But if we get them high enough in the air, we now know that it's enough to break them. This levels the playing field, and it's the perfect place to set a trap like this. Studios like these have catwalks in every room that hold the lights for their sets, so even though it's dangerous for us to be up there, it's just as dangerous for these robots. I would use a strategy with every single robot by luring them up as high as they're willing to follow me and have someone knock them off the catwalk to their deaths. They're machines, so there's no reason for them to be afraid of heights, and as long as they don't see the bodies of the other animatronics, they will all fall for the bait. Now this brings me to another important point here, because even if we manage to knock one down, it's still an advanced piece of technology. These things feel no pain, and are made out of a hard metal skeleton, so there's a reasonable chance this thing is still alive, and it might get back up to hunt us down like a T-800. By running away, these two wasted their best and only opportunity to pummel the crap out of this robot to make sure it's completely destroyed. If you're ever in a survival scenario and you think you've killed your opponent, don't stop there. Because overkilling is the best and only solution to staying alive. I would beat the crap out of this thing until it's a dead pile of junk. And only when I'm absolutely sure there's no conceivable way this thing could walk or talk again am I willing to turn my back on it and walk away. In the workshop, the kids are trying to escape when the mechanic enters the room. 
Zoe here begs the man to let them out, but the guy says he can't and shows them his chopped off fingers. He tells them the animatronics he built have gone rogue since they learned their show's being cancelled and won't listen to him anymore, so he has no choice but to obey them. That's when Harley tells him that he loves these robots and wants to help them get fixed. Hearing this, the man has a change of heart. He's about to unlock the door, but gets distracted when he sees Drooper the Lion dragging Bingo into the workshop and drops the keys. Running over to the broken animatronic, the kids quickly drag the keychain into their cell and unlock the gate. They escape the cage, and the mechanic tries to stop them, but Harley pokes him with a hot metal rod, and they throw the man into the cage, locking it behind him. This man is now trapped, but soon he's going to help turn one of his guests into a psychopathic killer just like his robot children, and you'll never guess who it is. Okay, these kids don't know it, but they just hit the jackpot. This is the workshop of the inventor of these robots, and if they took a moment to look around the room, they'd realize there was a gold mine of both weapons and information that could be used to destroy these creatures. First, on the wall next to his desk are tons of sketches of the robots that would tell them where the off switch is hiding and where the batteries are stored. Even if they're just 7 year old kids, all they need to do is look at the sketches and they're going to learn something about how to deal with these deadly machines. Now, if this doesn't work, we can go with plan B and go full Kevin McAllister on them. This guy has a welding helmet here and an old school gasoline blowtorch. Now, under no circumstances should a 7 year old kid who's still watching Banana Splits be playing with a blowtorch of any kind, except when you and your entire family are being hunted by serial killing robots. If I was this kid, I would grab this thing immediately because it would be the most effective weapon to fight them off. Their suits are pure cotton and plastic, and gas-filled blowtorches like this can burn as hot as 1,300 degrees Celsius, so they would light on fire insanely fast. Instead, they all run away and miss out on the only chance in their lives where they can justifiably play with fire and not get in trouble for it. Meanwhile, on the main stage, the producer is waiting with the dad when a spotlight suddenly turns on, revealing Flegel standing nearby. The woman orders it to stand down, but it won't obey any of her commands and grabs her by the throat. She manages to break out of the robot's grip, but Flegel here isn't going to show any mercy to her now, and it's decided to officially turn this into a death game. The animatronic sets the stage and throws him onto a mattress, but when the producer tries to run away, Flegel here stops the woman by breaking her fingers. The robot commands them to run the sloppy time course just like on the TV show, and the humans have no choice but to obey. They tread through the gauntlet, but when they finally reach the end of the course, the man finds the robot dog standing on the platform, and the producer realizes that the blue key is missing. That's when Flegel here raises it up, and as the woman realizes what's about to happen, it's too late. The robot takes the key and stabs the dad in the back before tossing the man over the railing to his death. Jumping down into the ball pit, the producer is relieved, thinking that she's just won the race. But as she climbs out, Drooper here steps in front of her and bashes her head in with a hammer. Okay, they should have seen this coming, because there's no way these animatronics were going to let any of them live. So far we've seen them shove a lollipop down someone's throat, force a girl to saw her boyfriend in half, cut a man's head off and place it back on perfectly to make him look alive, and burn this man's face off. There's no room in this pattern for winners, and the first person to realize this is going to have a much better chance at staying alive. Personally, instead of trying to win the game, I would let the other player go first, and when we get to this point in the obstacle course, I would wait for them to reach the top platform and make a dash for it on this lower deck. The producer here has the best chance at escaping, not only because she's second place, but she also knows all of the ins and outs of this studio. With that in mind, it's an easy decision to bolt for it and leave this man behind for the animatronics to finish him off. Honestly, this guy never even tried to look for his daughter after she got captured, and all he's done is sit around pouting about his face. He's a bad parent, and that makes this a much easier decision for us to make. The kids are trying to find a way out of the building, but they have no idea where to go. That's when Snorky the Elephant enters through the door, blocking their only exit. And with no escape, Harley here approaches the animatronic and does the most ridiculous thing you could imagine. Dancing their signature move, the kid begins the Snorky Shuffle, and the animatronic is just as confused as you are, but then he joins in. The kid asks for help, and Snorky gently takes his hand and begins to lead the children out of the room. Okay, I was not expecting that to work, but this was a major breakthrough because it confirms that as long as you're a kid, you can reason with these animatronics and it might just save your life. That means if we find a common goal, then we can negotiate our release, and it just so happens that right now, Harley and all of the animatronics' interests are aligned. 
Earlier in the workshop, the mechanic told the kids the reason these robots are so angry isn't just from bad programming, it's because they found out their show is being cancelled. And now that the network has shut it down, the animatronics are going to put on their own show of pure carnage. Harley here is a super fan, and since he doesn't want the show cancelled either, they can work together to bring it back. In the studio's offices, the tour guide tries to call the police and discovers the landline doesn't work. She pulls out the bags of confiscated phones in hopes of using one, but she's shocked to find all of them have been smashed to pieces. Leaving the office, the woman walks down through the corridors and turns around to see Drooper walking after her. He tracks the girl to the main stage, but doesn't realize she's hiding in the ball pit. By the way, this is the worst possible place to hide, because if you've ever been inside a ball pit, you'd know that every tiny movement will create a ripple effect on all the other balls around you. Even your chest moving as you breathe will give your position away. If Drooper here has found you, there's also no way to run away from him because it's a dead end. I would have hid under the seats here because I'd want to put something between myself and the robot that gives me another path to run away, but also because it's incredibly dark and we have a pretty good chance of not being seen. All of a sudden, someone pulls her out. Austin here tells her not to worry, but his mother tells her that the kids were taken by one of the animatronics. Paige here remembers that there's someone who might be able to help them and takes them to the mechanic's workshop. She asks the man how they can stop the robots, but he claims they can't be stopped. Worried about her kids, the mother tells them they were taken by the animatronics and the man assures her they won't be harmed. That's when her son Austin hears music playing behind them and the group discovers it's coming from a secret hatch in the floor. The mechanic reveals that this is where Banana Splits will be hosting their new show to all the abducting children and the group arm themselves with weapons to rescue the kids. This girl's about to follow them when she spots an unfinished animatronic hanging on a hook and finds out it's parts for a fifth Banana Split character the mechanic was building. Remembering how the robots murdered her boyfriend, she puts on the unfinished parts and decides to take her revenge on the mechanic. Meanwhile, the rest of the group make their way through an underground tunnel system, but the tour guide slips on a puddle of blood, finding the bodies of all the other grown-ups from the audience. That's when they hear kids screaming in the distance and go to rescue them. The group finds that the Banana Splits are hosting a nightmare version of their favorite show and are using their murdered victims as props. They plan on keeping the kids here forever to watch it, and it's the most disturbing thing you could ever imagine. The group sinks over to where the children are kept prisoner and try to break them out of their chains, but that's when the animatronics pull out the wheel of endings with a network head strapped to it. Paige here spots Harley and the other kids coming down the stairs with Snorky, and the robot chains them with the other kidnapped children. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Where do I sign up? Because as a kid, parents never let you watch anything rated R, and it's frustrating. These robots are willing to show us the craziest sh and it's definitely disturbing as all hell. But I'll bet you these kids will remember it for the rest of their lives. All joking aside, the obvious solution to this is that the show must go on. First of all, they aren't harming the children except psychologically and for the rest of their lives, but the kids are sitting here unharmed. So as much as we might want to protect these children from witnessing something horrific, it's just gonna get us caught and killed. The best thing to do is to create a distraction here to lure the animatronics away from the show so that the mother would help the children escape. I would push Austin out from hiding so the banana splits could see him, and he would have no choice but to run away. The more diversions we can create, the better chances we have of setting these kids free and getting them out of here. Locked to his seat, Harley here begs the robot elephant not to do this and is chosen the key to their shackles, letting the kid secretly take it without anyone knowing. Everyone watches as the other animatronics spin the wheel of endings and it lands on banana split. No one has any idea what it is, but Beth here runs out from her hiding place and tells the kids to close their eyes as the animatronics begin to rip the man off the wheels. They slowly split this guy apart, turning him into a limbless corpse. Using the key he was given, Harley here frees the rest of the kids from their chains and they all head for the exit. The mother is left alone to face the machines by herself, and she knocks Flegel the dog to the ground as Drooper grabs and tosses her to the ground. Recovering, Flegel drags her over to a flamethrower to burn her to death, but Austin comes to the rescue and jams his crowbar into its head. Furious, Drooper here knocks them both out. The animatronic reaches down and starts to strangle the mother, but that's when Hardly here saves the day. He still has his birthday wand and throws it across the room. Catching it, she extends it straight through the robot's head and kills the second animatronic. With the family reunited, they leave the stage and the killer robots behind them. Running back through the underground corridors, their way out is suddenly blocked by Bingo here, and it looks like there's no hope. But Snorky the Elephant leaps out of hiding and tackles the other animatronic to the ground. The two robots get into a fight, but neither of them survive the brawl. Harley here mourns the death of his favorite character as they all realize Snorky here died a hero. 
Outside the soundstage, Beth here heads to the car when her husband limps up to her with blood on his face and arms. He survived his run-in with Snorky earlier and begs to be taken back, but the woman is having none of it. She punches him out and tells him she wants a divorce, making it clear he'll have to call an Uber for the foreseeable future. But what do you think? How would you beat the banana splits? Let me know with a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching, leave a like and subscribe, and check out the How to Beat playlist for more videos like this. Until next time, have a damn good day.